In this video, we're going to solve the maximum average subarray problem, problem 643 from leak code. And to be able to do so, we need to understand the sliding window technique. So let's start off with the problem. You are given an integer array nums consisting of n elements and an integer k. Find a contiguous subarray whose length is equal to k that has the maximum average value and return this value. Any answer with a calculation error less than 10 to the power of negative 5 will be accepted. So here we have an example where we have the number array and there's values here, 1, 12, minus 5, minus 6, 50 and 3. And what we're aiming for is we want to find the maximum average subarray. So that means we need to loop through our array and where we find four elements that are next to each other, when they sum up to the greatest value um, and consequently when they are divided by the number k, that will yield the maximum number. So here we see we've got 1, 12, minus 5, minus 6. If you add those together, um, so minus 5 minus 6 is a minus 11, plus 12, that'll be uh, 1, and then the 1, that'll be 2, and then 2 divided by 4, that'll be 0 0.5. But if we slide over to the 12, negative 5, negative 6, and 50, and then we divide that through by 4, uh, we see that we get the largest possible um, subarray average in this array for the given k value. We need to understand the sliding window technique. And before we talk about that, briefly, I just want to mention why we would consider using a sliding window technique. Because this problem seems easy enough to solve. You simply look at the first four numbers. You try and find their average. And then you'd look at the next four numbers. And then you try and find the average. And then you look at the next four numbers until you reach um, a place in the array where you can't uh, get another k element. So this is the end here, um, because obviously we can't go past the length of the array. So if you look at this solution, you might start to think, well, this is probably going to be of n squared, um, because we need to find the sum of the first four, but then we need to go back to near the beginning, skipping just the first element, and then find the next number of elements. And if k was to be uh, even larger, let's say um, five elements, and then we go to the next one, we need to consider the case that k is almost equal to the length there, which means you know we're going to need to go through n multiple times within um, a loop. So the trick here, uh, whenever you see like one of these problems that are O of n squared um, intuitively, it should bring awareness to the fact that, okay, well, this is an algorithm question. There's probably some way to solve it more efficiently. Um, and O of n is probably a good place to start in our thinking. So the sliding window technique, it's a technique that allows you to solve this in O of n times. So you only need to loop through uh, the iteration once. You only need to loop through the array once. And the idea of it is essentially when you're dealing with subarrays of an array, if it's possible that you can save some information on each iteration about the previous element that you're on, then you might be able to use that information to for the next iteration. So for example here, if we consider 1, 12, negative 5 and negative 6, and we know if we add those together, we're going to get the number 2. Well, we can use this number 2 when we increment our index. So if we increment our index from 0 to 1, and then we're considering the numbers from 12 to 50, then in this case here, 
rather than looping through all of the numbers again, so 12, negative 5, negative 6, we can recognize, well, since we want k equal to 4, and we're considering numbers 12 to 50, um, and we want to add those together, well, we've already added the numbers 1, 12, minus 5, and minus 6 together. So three of these numbers we've actually already added together. So why would we go back to the beginning of the array and then recalculate that? If we can take those numbers and then we just subtract the um, one value there, which was the previous index, and then we also add on this 50, which is um, the index at the value k after you've incremented one across, well then you've simplified the um, complexity because rather than needing to loop through all the numbers, you can you can just simply subtract the first number and add on the last number there. And if k was large, you're saving a huge amount of lookups because you don't need to re-loop through the array. So essentially, since we've done 1 plus 12 plus minus 5 plus minus 6, and we know that's 2, what we can do here is we can take that sum. We can say, okay, so we've got the number 2 here. So let's take the 2 that we've already summed up, and then let's subtract the previous element that's no longer in consideration for the subarray where k equals to 4 after things have been incremented. We just subtract off that first element there. And then let's add on the 50, which is the last element that K spans across in the new iteration. And if we add these together, we'll get the number 51. And then if we divide through by 4, well, we know 48 divided by 4 is 12. So then we have 3 quarters remaining. So that will be equal to 12.75. And it turns out, uh, as you could imagine, if we consider the next sequence or the next subarray, minus 5 to 3, well, we can see that this 12 number was larger, larger than this negative 5 number. So, you know, that value is going to result in a smaller uh, um, addition or sum and also a smaller average. Let's go ahead and write the code for this. Let's keep track of the maximum sum. So we can let the max sum equal to zero initially. And then we're going to want to have a for loop. So we'll let i be the index we're tracking, starting at zero, and then we'll increment i up until the index k. And then we can go ahead and we can just simply increment that. So basically what I'm doing here is for this first iteration, or for this first for loop, I'm just considering the first k numbers because we need to calculate the first max sum. So in the case where k is equal to 4, we can just take the elements 0, 1, 2, and 3 and they'll be less than k equals 4. So we can simply just say, well, the max sum, we can just add on for each iteration the number that was in the array at that particular index. And then that will give us a good starting point of something we can compare to. So as we saw in the sliding window technique, we want to be able to track the previous sum. So in addition to wanting to know the max sum, we want to know the previous sum because based on the previous sum, we can subtract the first element and add on the last um, element um, when we slide the window over. So we can just say we want to track the previous sum. Now, initially, the previous sum is equal to the max sum because we haven't actually moved over yet. But this is why we have another for loop here. And notice that this for loop isn't nested within the for loop. 
which is probably what we would have needed to do without the sliding window technique. So if you add two for loops together, that will simplify to O of N. So actually, let's just go ahead and copy this syntax here because we're going to loop over things again. But this time, rather than letting I equals to zero, well, we've already found the um, first value there where I is equal to zero, or the first, um, we've summed up the first K values. So we don't need to consider what the sum is for that because we've already calculated the max sum. So we can actually move over to I equals one. And I needs to be less than not k because we need to slide all the way over and k could be small or large. So k is variable. So what we can do is we can say, well, if i is less than a nums array, the length of that. Um, so we don't want to loop all the way to the last element because as you've seen, we need k room after that. Otherwise, we'll go past the end of the array. So what we need to do is we just need to subtract k off, um, but k refers to the number um, and we're dealing with arrays, so we need to just add on one to that just so we don't skip too many and lose the last um, k numbers in the array. What we can do is we can simply calculate the sum so the sum is just going to be equal to the previous sum. And then we can go ahead and we can subtract off the element before it. So we have this i minus one. So we need to add on the kth positions um, number. So we can just go ahead and say, well, whatever index we're on plus k. So that'll give us the spread or the last element for the k's subarray length and then because it's an array we just need to subtract off one here so that's how we do calculate the previous sum oh sorry the sum then what we can do is we can simply just set the previous sum equal to the sum so in the first case where the index is equal to zero, well, we've just set the previous sum equal, equal to where the index is zero all the way up to the index where it's equal to K or four or three. Um, and then when we loop through, we slide the window over. We're considering the sum of the next subarray. That means we can say, well, the previous sum for the next iteration is going to be simply equal to that sum. Because then when we go to the next iteration, we'll have that value here. And then we can once again use the sliding window technique to subtract off the element uh, just outside or to the left of the sliding window and add on the new last element in the sliding window since we have an extra room there. So basically all we need to do now is we just need to say, well, if the sum is greater than the max sum. What we can do here is we can just say, well, the max sum is equal to sum. So this is always going to have a value here. So basically what we want to do is we want to return the max sum. And basically if we calculate the sum for any of the sliding windows, so for any of the subarrays where we've calculated the sum, if that value is greater than the previously assigned max sum, we just want to override the max sum and then we return that. So let's just take a quick look at the time space complexity here. So the time complexity is O of N because we've got a for loop here. So we need to do a memory lookup for each element up to k and then we've got a for loop here so this is going to be um, the addition of two for loops so technically this for loop 
could be smaller than n, but it could also be equal to n. Um, so we need to consider that, but it doesn't really matter in either case because 0 of 2n simplifies to O of n. And then the space complexity here, this is just going to be O of 1 because we've only got the variables max sum and previous sum. And then we've also got this sum here, but that gets reassigned in the loop. So we've only really got three memory slots that we're looking for or need to assign values to. So O of 3 simplifies to O of 1. Oh, and of course we need to find the average, not just the um, maximum. So we just need to divide by K here. So let's go ahead and submit that. Okay, so that's all well and good.